Honolulu, Hawaii, and a much better, healthier looking Daz Smith in the UK. Daz, take it away and tell us about how you're doing with your uh, accident there. You look, you look better. Hi there. Yeah, I'm, I'm looking a little bit better. I think, as you can see there, I've got a, uh, a nice uh, Mandy scar that's going to be there from now on. Um, I guess it will add to my appearance, you know, can't get any uglier, so, <laughs> you know, it'll help. But yeah, the uh, it's the it's the ribs that are hurting most at the moment, and they're they're still quite black. Um, so you have uh, two you have two broken ribs still. Uh, I I don't know if they're broken or cracked. They're very painful because they didn't they didn't X-ray me, and so they didn't tell me because there's nothing they can do with ribs in the UK. They just like send you home with painkillers. Um, but literally, my entire side and um, all down my back is is blue and black all, all the way down my back and side. That's not. Uh conducive to re remote viewing <clears throat> no i have to make sure at the moment you know i've been doing a couple uh, just to get back in the swing of it and i have to make sure I've, i'm sitting up right like i am now and i've got a nice pillow to support my rib side just to, just to, so i'm not in pain but you know hopefully within uh, a, a few more weeks i'll be i'll be 100 percent again but i'm nearly there i'm getting there well it's good to see that you're looking good were you wearing a helmet while you were riding that bike i wasn't uh I've been one of the people for years. I've been sending my wife, oh, because it's you know it's a bicycle, um, and I do go, I do, I do go at speed. And I uh, for years have been saying, oh, what, you know, uh, why do I need a, why do I need a helmet? That's for wimps. Um, but after, yeah, I got to be honest. If uh, if I'd been going my normal speed, I probably wouldn't, I, I probably wouldn't be here today. I probably would have been, I probably would have been dead. Uh, it was only, it was only because uh, a van was going down in front of me that slowed me down to less than half my normal speed that that when I hit my head and hit my eye, that it wasn't as bad as it was. So first thing I'm going to do when I can actually walk to town is, is go buy a helmet. Yeah, well, you don't need me to lecture you about a helmet. So. Did, did they do a, like a, a concussion protocol? How many fingers am I holding up? Did you get a concussion? Yeah, yeah. yeah and they wouldn't let me go home for four hours. I had to sit there just to make sure that, you know, I didn't, I didn't faint or, or go into any kind of concussion stuff. Um, you know, they were a little bit worried because I hit, I hit it all right there as well, but that healed pretty well. It, and and that part there and all this was you know sealed up at one point um but yeah i've learned my lesson now and uh, if anyone else is riding the bike out there please do buy a helmet because um it, it can easily be done yeah okay we're going to talk a little bit about um a little bit of change in our protocol and this is for our subscribers um we're going to try it try a little different approach to remote viewing cryptocurrencies I've never been a fan, and I think Dan agreed. Uh, I, I think Daz agreed. I say Dan because I'm just working with an editor named named Dan. I think Daz would agree that um, trying to remote view, say, what's the price of Tron going to be on September 12th, is a very that remote viewing just doesn't seem to work that way. It's very difficult. Numbers are hard. It's a it's a future event that is in such flux, and it's it's a tough one. What are your thoughts on that, Dan? Uh, Daz? Absolutely. Um, as you as you know, I've been um, I've been on the uh, I haven't really uh, set my sights on doing ARV uh, associative remote viewing targets uh, for many years. I've, I've done it occasionally, uh, just, to, just as fun really, like I did the world cup and, you know, won some money on that. Um, but I've, I've followed the fringes of it and what people are doing research wise. And it seems that it's, um, it's very problematic doing this kind of thing. And what they found in the research is the more targets you have as, as outcomes, uh, three or four or, or more, um, the, 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 the possibility of getting a good accuracy goes down and down and down with more targets you have, which is why I think we're uh, hopefully moving to this uh, ARV binary approach. So, you know, either yes or no, or good or bad. Um, and, you know, that still allows a possibility of less accurate than normal remote viewing um, because there are two targets instead of one target. Um, but it is better than what we've been doing so far, where we have free, free targets as conclusions. Uh, and yeah, we have been going for pretty obscure, non-physical things like you know, and it's all money based. What you know, will this will this currency be at a such and such rate two years in the future? And that's all pie in the sky. It's got no physicality to it. At all, so it's very hard for a remote viewer to. 
it, yeah. It, yeah, it may have very little meaning to our subconscious, which doesn't give a shit about numbers. And uh... Absolutely. And, and the guys out there might not know this, but uh, uh, me and you as remote viewers, uh, in the way that we're trained, we're trained to um, primarily just describe targets. And we have to describe it using our physical senses. So it's like, you know, we have to try to pretend to touch the target or taste the target or smell the target to try to get data coming back from us. And that's very hard to do with targets like cryptocurrencies when they're, um, when they're money-based because generally uh, non-physical money doesn't have any feelings. It doesn't have any textures. It doesn't have any smells or tastes. Yeah, I've, as a remote viewer, I generally, I generally don't like to do future targets that often. Either I mean that's not been a big staple of my remote viewing, other than Courtney's time cross. But we're we're going for more mysteries in the past or where something is now, and not not to say that we can't do future targets, but to do only future targets, and only future targets that involve numbers, is kind of mind numbing to remote viewers. It is, yeah. It gets a bit repetitive, and as we know, you know, and as research shows over the years as well that. Um, if, if things start getting boring and repetitive and uh, for the remote viewer, then the remote viewer's accuracy tends to, to wane in itself because, you know, uh, the subconscious, the parts inside of us are, are is crying out for, for new experiences and, yeah, and exciting things. So, yeah, by doing, you know, by switching it up a bit as well, I think that will allow us a degree of changing the target styles um, and allow us to have that little bit of excitement back into the process. Okay, and enough excuses. How are we going to solve this and what are we going to do? We've been working with Daz and me and with uh, Michael and Ed and a number of other people. We've been brainstorming on this. <clears throat> Still losing my voice, sorry. And what we're going to shift to is doing a binary approach. And we're not looking at the um, exact number of a token in the future. What we're going to be looking at is whether the token is viable, whether the company still exists and the, the token is still trading. OK, so we're going to we want to we want to know, is this going to be here a year from now or two years from now? And that's a binary question. That's a yes or no. That's an up or down. It doesn't involve numbers. It, it could involve activity emotion, any number of things which we should be able to successfully perceive. Yeah, I, I, and I think that's the great way to go. Um, you know, because, uh, uh, you know, we could like, for example, look at X currency at the end of 2019, and we can look at uh, what are uh, the, what are the collect collective emotions of, of the backing team behind this currency. And I think me and you and, and, and Rock and any remote viewer should really be able to really focus in on, on a, a collective roof of, uh, of emotions much more better than we can with something that's not physical in any way, which is, you know, figures and numbers and money and stuff. So, th so that will be level one of our work. Is, and we're going to focus, uh, and I'll talk a little bit later on our 40 tokens that we have on our list, but the preliminary work is going to be binary. A yes or no is we're looking at is this viable in the future? Uh, is it still around? Has it stopped trading? Um, is is there good emotion surrounding it? So that will be the preliminary remote viewing work. Then once we've identified that, then we're going to task more specific remote viewing and go at it in depth in the type of remote viewing that Daz and I do well. And this, this is evidence in the ones we've published so far, which would have been, who is Satoshi Nakamoto? What was the behind the, co -found, the founder of SALT and any agreements he might have? Um, the exchange union, those are three that we did. So we're going to shift to that type of in-depth uh, look at the company. Oh, and by the way, Daz, you and I did pretty well on that. Uh, Salt, uh, particularly your work yeah. with with the trouble. Good, good work on that. It seems pretty accurate so far. I'm, I'm pleased on that, and it just goes to show that um, we can do predictive targets because me and you, as, as you know, we did really well on on the series for Courtney on Time Cross. Um, but they were, you know, they were 
uh, physical targets that were happening. So it gave us something to latch on to. Um, and I think that's it's very similar to what we got with the salt thing as well. We were, we were lashing on to a future target that, that had some real physicality because we were lashing on to a person, uh, which is a lot easier than trying to describe what, what, what's going to happen with a money action. It, it is a much better use of remote, remote viewing to um, look at the behind the, the emotions, the thoughts, the intents of people, uh, their intentions. That is, uh, that's where remote viewing shines and that's where Daz and I have been training many years and there's some good insights to be seen from that. So we'll be doing that and we'll also be doing the mystery woo-woo type targets. So that's, that's how we're going to do it. Binary, which coins are, do we want to look at in depth, which ones do we feel are going to be good. Then the more in-depth, um, you know, meaty targets. And then we're going to continue to look at coins and the uh, coins that we have on our list, like the 40 that we put out, these weren't really a result of remote viewing. This is a result of hard uh, data and analysis and knowledge that Michael and some of his associates bring to the table. So it's, it's a mixture. It's not just all remote viewing and it's not just analysis of current events. We've, we've got a lot of different things going on yeah yeah and it's the way it should be as well as me and you know um and how, how the military used remote viewing as well remote viewing should never be used on its own it should always be used with other sources of information to con confirm and deny and you know enhance all, all information and sources should should enhance each other as well they never used remote viewing as a standalone tool but on the other hand, I've had guys in Intel tell me all Intel briefings contained some remote viewing without telling the client that it did. They would call it special collection methods, but they, uh, it was used more widely than we were, than was let on. Okay, so that's the new, um, that's the new thrust of our remote viewing. We're going to get to work and Daz's ribs are healing. I just got an air conditioner. It's been so hot here. I, I, I remote view usually about six or seven in the evening. I have a little dinner and then I sit down to view and it's just been 85% humidity and 90 degrees and I'm just sitting here with sweat dripping down. So I've, I've got an air conditioner. I'm gonna have better, uh, better conditions. Shockingly, it's even been hot here in the UK. You know, we're having degree, we're having temperatures, you know, way in the in the top thirties and forties here, which it, you know, is probably not hot for you guys. For for us in the UK here, it's just like it's stifling, and it, all the grass is dying. We've got hose pipe bans, so you can't use any water and everything. So, yeah, I think the world's suffering with a lot of this heat at the moment, all around. Yeah. Well, there's a rule in remote remote viewing: no target talk. But I think that in the future we're going to be doing, it, it, it will be tasked, climate conditions will be tasked to us. I know that's coming and they'll, they'll sneak it at us blind. And it'll That'd be, be a good one to do. Yeah, I'll look forward to that. All right, Daz, it's good to see you. You're, you're looking good. And actually that little scar is going to be handsome on you. You're going to look uh, just a little devilish, you know, like you, you're a little tough guy. To my wife, it might it might end up looking like one of those little Harry Potter zigzaggy kind of lightning scars. Yeah. Did you get? Do you have uh, stitches in that thing? No, no. It just it's just you know like naturally it's just naturally closed up there. That's it. Yeah, well, all across. It'll, it'll heal up. It'll be a little bit more character for you. All right, Daz. There you go, and uh, we'll have more more material coming out soon it's a, it's this is a fun project and we're working hard for you aloha everybody